I welcome all of our panelists today. Thank you so much for joining our discussion today. Mr. Berman, let me begin with you. You're a sworn environmentalist and a crusader of sustainability. What are the biggest sustainability challenges we are facing today and how are they linked to overpopulation? If I was to pick two out of the many challenges that we are facing, is one is climate change and the other is the air pollution. The reason that we look at air pollution is because our children are suffering. They are suffering from asthma, lung ailments, etc. So that is immediately apparent. But there are others which are, which are behind, uh, which are the cause of this is the climate change. So all of them will be apparent in no time. It is linked to population because the greater amount of population means greater amount of gases and that is leading to climate change and then this is a you know step down effect which carries on and on and this is that this is the trouble of overpopulation right dr rajivan if i may take my next question from you what is the biggest impact of climate change in india the temperature over the country has risen about 0.8 degree for the last 100 years which is the same rate of uh, global warming rate. And, uh, but monsoon, as far as monsoon, monsoon is our bread and butter. And as far as monsoon rainfall is concerned, it is, uh, there's not much change. So monsoon is a very robust system. But within the monsoon season, we see appreciable changes in terms of daily rainfall activity. So we do now get more and more, more intense rainfall activities, uh, events, the heavy rainfall events, which can lead to flash flares and uh, large scale urban floods, etc. And the third thing is, uh, in between the monsoon season, the so-called the dry spells, the, the frequency of dry spells as well as the, the duration of the dry spell also is increasing, which is not really good for agriculture. And as far as uh, heat waves are concerned, as you know, the heat waves are also is, uh, can affect our health. And heat wave frequency, duration, and intensity also is increasing. And the last one is uh, the tropical cyclone. The, fre the frequency may not be changing, but when a cyclone forms, it is likely more likely to intensify into, intensify into a very, very severe cyclonic storm. So intensity of tropical cyclone is increasing. And of course, we all know that sea level, level the whole globe, sea level is rising. Over Indian region, it's almost, almost 3 millimeter per year, the sea level right. is rising. And because of that, coastal erosion is happening in uh, almost 30 percentage of our Indian coast. Right. Fair enough. Uh, I completely agree with you as far as coastal erosion is also concerned. Uh, Mr. Gupta, let me also um, come to you. Would you agree that overpopulation is the real reason for global warming? Please share your thoughts with us. See, I will not say that overpopulation is the real reason for uh, global warming. Overpopulation will become a problem and a cause for the global warming only when our lifestyle is such, our consumption pattern is such, that we are over, over exploiting the resources and we are not recycling it. Mm. So in my view, the, it's the play between the population, the kind of lifestyle which we have and the kind of recycling of the resources we are doing rather than exploiting the original res natural resources. And in this context only, our Honorable Prime Minister, he has given a call for a sustainable lifestyle. Now sustainable lifestyle will depend the kind of population number which we are having and the lifestyle which we are having. If we are having the, a more population, that means our lifestyle will have to be such that we do with the, the limited resources which are available and recycle more and more resources. Dr. Rajivan, the global consumption of fossil fuels, the primary source of CO2 emissions has gone up by 78% in the last three decades itself. Could you explain the impact of this? Yeah, carbon dioxide, as all of us know, that uh, it's a uh, uh, greenhouse gas. And uh, last many years, especially after the Industrial Revolution, we have been uh, emitting, uh, burning more fossil fuels, especially carbon dioxide. And uh, by increase, due to increase in carbon dioxide, greenhouse effect, due to greenhouse effect, the global warming is happening. And uh, so there is a lot of pressure on, uh, especially from the UN to all the nations, to cut down the fossil fuel emissions or consumption and uh, move more to the renewable, new and renewable or green energy. And India is really, I'm very happy to see that uh, with under, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, we have committed more and more uh, re renewable energy now and uh, we have, uh, we are going, the progress is much faster than what we really committed. 
carbon dioxide is a uniformly distributed gas. So only one particular country cannot be blamed. All of us should take, including developed countries like US, UK, European Union, Australia, all those countries should own it. And they should assume that even though the population number is small, but they're because of just now they're talking about lifestyle. It's really lifestyle makes big difference. So the overall, all the countries should make a commitment. We should not say it is not my job, it right. is your job. Absolutely agree with you. It is a global effort that has to come from all the countries. Mr. Gupta, talking about the water scarcity issue in India, more than 62 billion litres of untreated waste flows into the Indian rivers. We know that the country's booming population and rapidly expanding urban areas have exacted a huge toll on its rivers. We know a lot is already being done, but is it enough? Well, let me say that we are a water starved country. Definitely, in comparison to the global standard, our per capita availability itself is shrinking as our population increases. We generate a, in urban India roughly about 75,000 million litres of a sewage waste per day. Our capacity of treating the sewage is roughly about uh, 30 30000 million liters per day or so and actual operations they are for about roughly about 20000 million liter water per day which out of the sewage which we are treating so this capacity has been actually increasing more rapidly than the the sewage water which we are generating so we hope in the near future we will be able to cover a lot of more sewage water we will be treating it and reusing it. Right. I'm glad that the government has come up with programs yes. which are much needed.